you can start whenever you want. Thank you, Delphine. I'm trying to tell a quite long story that my colleagues and I undertook more than uh, 10 years ago, and starting from France, and namely uh, from colleagues from La Rochelle uh, University, uh, as an example, Paco Bustamante at uh, La Rochelle University, who found that the Rad, uh, the Bay of La Rochelle, was strangely contaminated by unusual elements, uh, rare earths, that were uh, a piece of news at that time. It was around 2006, 2007. And we were invited, a colleague and me, to La Rochelle University for studying the effect uh, of uh, lanthanum and cerium that were in excess in uh, La Rochelle Bay uh, on the development uh, of, the, uh, of sea urchins. And this led us also to a study in, uh, at Cherbourg University uh, to uh, a paper published in 2010 where uh, together uh, with uh, <coughs> French, Turkish, uh, uh, Austrian um, and other Italian uh, colleagues, we uh, found both developmental toxicity and cytogenetic effects following uh, to sea urchin embryo exposure to these uh, rare earth elements. On the other side of Eurasia, a Korean group by Professor Rim uh, was studying these elements under another viewpoint of occupational medicine, of industrial medicine, reporting, uh, reporting on the uh, uh, human health impacts um, of the exposures uh, to um, rare earths. And altogether, a couple of years later, this led uh, a group of us, of several uh, countries, to publish a book uh, f uh, focusing on the effect of rare earth elements uh, on both human and environmental health. There was a long list of uh, colleagues from uh, Korea, from Italy, of course, uh, from uh, the USA, um, from uh, Canada. Uh, one of these was Philippe Thomas, um, who was particularly uh, uh, focusing uh, on the effect on wild and uh, cu cultivated uh, plants uh, in Canada and, and German colleagues. Uh, and altogether, this, uh, this book uh, provided us with a, a multiple uh, viewpoint uh, on uh, rare earth exposures in terms of adverse and protective effects. One of these papers was by Nascarella and Calabrese that must be recalled because Edward Calabrese uh, has focused for many years on the effects of hormesis, such, uh, such as a magic word uh, from the Greek term hormao, which means to excite, to stimulate, 
and uh, across many, many years of his uh, past and present activity, uh, um, um, uh, Calabrese has provided a bright uh, witness uh, of Hormese's phenomena under many viewpoints. I like to recall these photographs taken 40 years ago in Scotland, in Aberdeen, from uh, a tank of Echinus esculentus sea urchins to say a few words about uh, my colleagues and my um, particular toy in uh, investigating uh, adverse effects. We may have a scheme where you uh, may um, start from fertilization across to uh, hatching and larval differentiation and catch some key events that include uh, developmental defects. For example, you can see here normal pluteae or abnormal pluteae or blocked uh, embryos. And you may, you may carry out effects on mitosis or effects on um, embryonic development. In the case of sperm pretreatment, you can obtain uh, a number of side information. First of all, if a given agent causes decrease in fertilization rate. And second, to check the effects on early cleavage or later effects on uh, developmental defects on pluteae or at various timings, uh, biochemical uh, changes such as redox um, alteration, DNA damage. And as for the cytogenetic uh, uh, effects that have been the major focus of my dear um, uh, colleague and friend Rahime Oral from uh, Izmir, Turkey, you may observe abnormalities that include an anaphase bridge or lagging chromosomes or multipolar spindle or simply scattered chromosomes. As a summary of what can be observed in other um, bioassay uh, systems that my colleagues and I uh, <laughs> have been and are investigating, we can consider uh, the case of uh, acid mine discharge and to effects on growth or germination or genotoxicity in uh, Raphidocalis subcapitata uh, Lepidium salina, uh, sativum, uh, vicia faba. Uh, as a short linguistic note, please recall that we are unluckily, since uh, the 18th century, linked to a Latin denomination in botany and in zoology, and that the present advances in Latin reading want us to pronounce a C like a K and a G like a gamma. So for example, but just one example, Raphidocalis subcapitata 
or Vicia Faba. Otherwise, it's the Babel Tower. We have an Italian, a French, an English, a German, who knows, a, a Persian pronunciation for these uh, uh, names that were built to be one way of expressing the name of a plant or an animal in the 18th century. Excuse me for this extra scientific um, um, uh, point, but uh, it's our job and it would be strange for us to say Vicia Faba in Italian or Vicia Faba in French or Vicia Faba in, in English and Unzo Weiter Vicia Faba uh, in, uh, in Deutsch. Okay, ahead, excuse me. <laughs> but try to remember. In uh, 2015, we reported a, a review on the human and animal health effects of rare earth uh, elements. It was, as it was in the state of art in 2015, and that would be the, the ground to build further studies in the more recent years. Altogether, by comparing a number of effects following embryo exposures or sperm exposures, we could find, by comparing a few rear earths that developmental defects following embryo exposures were highest for gadolinium, lanthanum, and yttrium, while for cytogenetic anomalies, the highest effects were given by gadolinium and lanthanum. And a number of redox abnormalities were found to different extent to, uh, by others, other uh, rare earths. Following sperm exposures, the uh, strongest effects on uh, fertilization inhibition were given by europium, atrium, and gadolinium, while the induction of transmissible damage from sperm to the offspring was given by lanthanum and atrium and cytogenetic anomalies were provided especially by cerium. A few other um, uh, uh, papers in those years. And A more recent uh, paper uh, compared uh, the uh, early life uh, effects in uh, Paracentrotus lividus and Arbachia lixula sea urchins. An interesting uh, report by Maria Gravina and our group was comparing the effect of a number of uh, rare earth elements also as a function of paramagnetic uh, um, uh, properties of um, rare earths. In particular, the highest toxicity was associated in this study on two species, uh, on, in, on Spherechinus granularis, uh, to Olmium and dysprosium, that were the highest uh, um, uh, effectors of paramagnetic um, action compared to the other less effective um, uh, rare earths. Uh, Among these effects, 
it was interesting that uh, heavy rare earth elements uh, caused a significant um, uh, damage in terms uh, of mitotic activity and increased mitotic ab ab abnormalities. By changing field, we went back to the earliest and, and recent literature on the effects of rare earths on human health, in particular following occupational rare earth exposures. It had been published since the early 1982 that movie projectionists exposed to aerosol containing rare earths underwent to pneumoconiosis and interstitial lung disease which was also observed for carbon arc lamps in those uh, early years as 1995. And a glass polisher described by a Korean group, Yunnan co-workers in 2005, underwent dendriform pulmonary by as a Spanish group, Hernandez Enriquez and co-workers, found out a decreased hemoglobin concentration among workers uh, in Nigeria uh, having been exposed to e-waste cleaning. Just to make a, a summary of the different pieces of evidence that have been collected from experimental and uh, industrial medicine uh, studies. It is clear that uh, <coughs> rare earth exposures cause lung and liver toxicity and have multiple damage, including growth, reproduction, fertilization. These exposures are di directly linked to oxidative stress and cause bioaccumulation. And the product of cerium dioxide Nanopower, nan, uh, nanomaterial, and diesel exhaust increased multiple lung damage following animal exposure, intratracheal um, administration of this mixture of diesel exhaust and nano, um, um, uh, nanocerium oxide. And last uh, but not least, in animal studies, lung fibrosis and pneumoconiosis were found. And this led us to um, figure out a study that will be a matter of my friend and colleague Antonio Sbruziotis shortly. Um, and a study, an industrial medicine study on a limited number of exposed people, but which gives uh, interesting and promising um, uh, commitments. Now let me go back to another uh, story which has to do with rare earths. Now we know but 21 years ago, in 2002, together again with uh, French colleagues, we were studying the uh, effect of bauxite sludge in uh, several uh, sites, 
where bauxite processing occurred, uh, called uh, red mud, uh, boue rouge. Uh, in uh, Gardan, in uh, Porto Vesme, in Sardinia, and in other sites uh, in Greece and in Turkey. So we were already somewhat uh, familiar with the story of bauxite sludge much before, five, seven years before, uh, we started to switch on our uh, lamps uh, on uh, uh, rare earth elements. And this brought us, more recently, in 2019, to a study of the Gardan uh, site in southern France, not far away from um, Aix-en-Provence, by focusing on combined emissions from bauxite um, manufacture and an oil um, production uh, plant, and with a focus on the, on the rare earth components. And this uh, could uh, lead us to understand that the highest um, uh, frequency of dead um, um, uh, embryos following exposure to uh, ground collected in this area around the factory was related both to the distance from the power plant and to the distance of the bauxite plant. And as for, this is another view of Gardan, you see how near it is to Marseille. And we could see that by far aluminium and iron had the highest concentrations in these soil samples. But later, but just after aluminium and iron, there were rare earths, and much above then so-called rare elements, such as, for instance, uh, lead, vanadium, um, uh, uh, copper, and, and bismuth. Another recent study that I started three years ago with our uh, shared friends Franca Tommasi, and which is still unpublished, relates to the investigation on an oil um, refining area in uh, eastern Sicily, in Augusta and Priolo. And we um, carried out investigations according to the different sites on sea urchins, as, uh, uh, spherechinus granularis, uh, diatoms, nematodes, and onions at um, uh, uh, Franca's lab. And we could, uh, in a way, bind the different results uh, for heaviest, intermediate, or lightest uh, effects. This paper is now uh, expecting a completion under the viewpoint of human health by, uh, by our shared friend, uh, Daniel um, Alliance in Rovini, um, uh, Croatia. We have several things which are not yet published and there is a new horizon, an area which is most relevant for human and environmental concern in Ireland. It's a, a big uh, repository of uh, red mud 
from an aluminium uh, processing plant in uh, Western uh, Ireland. And in, uh, West, in Ireland, the problem of Rusal aluminium alumina, uh, area uh, has a big uh, social uh, and uh, environmental impact. Uh, already much work has been done, but the problem is not yet solved. And they just send us to our lab, and we are splitting in several labs, including, again, uh, Francas and Constantinos. Um, samples from this red mud from Ireland, and we are soon trying to understand better uh, what's going on, with a particular focus in this case, not so much and not exclusively to rare earths, but also to radioactive material, which appears to be in the Irish media as a relevant issue of environmental concern. And so, in uh, 2019, uh, we reported just um, a state of art of what could mean a human exposures to in, uh, rare earth elements uh, by reporting what is known, especially from the early uh, occupational studies and uh, from the uh, early uh, Chinese investigations on best um, uh, mining areas, and in view of possible involvement of rare earths in oil refining, adding additives to um, oil products, and exposures in uh, mechanic um, uh, workshops. Oops. Well, this slide is, uh, is again a, a, a data um, a summary of metal and PAH food accumulation and a number of geographic population studies carried out in mining areas in China and occupational exposures dating back to 1990s up to recent years. And this is the title of the report that uh, Antonio Smitsiotis is going to, to tell our unpublished uh, study. And I change again the subject. And uh, this links us to the uh, everlasting collaboration with Franca Tommasi uh, since the beginning, and which is still continuing. The relevance of rare earths as additives, both in agronomy and in zootechny. Referring to pre-existing literature from China, dating back to 1980s, 1990s, and telling us that moderate low concentrations of rare earth mixtures produce better crop yield and pre, uh, better uh, animal growth or um, egg production. Okay. 
And I conclude with uh, a few lines about an ongoing uh, study uh, that we started last year and which, continue, which is going to continue from next week. And on the title of or Hormetic Effects of Cerium, Lanthanum, and their combination at sub-micromolar concentration in sea urchins and in a marine diatom, Feodactum tricornutum. We could see that if we uh, had care of placing controls with an uh, inactivation period of uh, sperm suspension leading the fertilization rate in controls to 50% and not to 100%, we could see that by adding cerium nitrate or lanthanum nitrate or their combination, we could obtain a higher fertilization rate at concentrations of 10 to the minus 7, 10 to the minus 8 molar, <coughs> up to the inhibitory concentration of 10 to the minus 5th molar. And the opposite could be seen if we were to consider the effects on the offspring of, the, uh, of this uh, treated sperm that uh, were lesser um, for low uh, level uh, cerium, lanthanum, and even more so for their mixture, up to a definite inhibitory effect uh, going above 10 to the minus 6 molar. And this is uh, an ongoing work that will give us further analytical determinations of rare earths and other metals and of selected organic pollutants at Naples uh, Archelab Laboratory, sea urchins bioassay, nematode Caenorhabditis elegans, diatom Feodactylum tricornutum, allium and P root elongation. And uh, the people, just the, the main participants, not considering the, the young uh, um, uh, guys that belong to this huge community, uh, are Marco Trifoggi, who is director of my lab, Marco Guida, a good old friend, Franca Tommasi, very good uh, <laughs> old friend, and uh, Rahim Oral from uh, Turkey, Daniel Lyons, an Irish man working in Rovini, Croatia, and Philippe Thomas um, from the Environmental and Climate Change Canada, Ottawa. Thank you for attention. You Thank you very much, Giovanni. What I propose is that we directly continue with Antonio's presentation because it's sure. very linked. Sure. And we can do the question for both well, presentations. We are joint. That's right. what I understood, yeah. Come on. So, 